Today I'm going to talk about an application called Scratch. It's a way of making animations or games on your computer and it's a free program and it actually teaches you the basics of coding while you're creating games or animations. So it's a really good resource to use. We're going to be using the online version you find at scratch.mit.edu and there's also a local version, an offline version you can download um, from the website and that way if you have internet connection issues you can download that and you'll never have to worry about connecting to the internet but we're going to be using the online version like I said and I'm going to be showing you real quick how to make a maze game it's a fun game uh, to learn how to 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 create and then that's what I'm going to do right at the beginning I'm going to create when I go to the website there's a little icon called create I'm going to create a new project so I'm just going to click on create and what it's going to do is it's going to open a new project and so the the start of each project is the same for um, every time so um, you're always going to have this cat this is the mascot of scratch and in this case it's going to be our protagonist it's going to be our main character that we're going to have control over and is going to be going through this maze that we establish for it so the way it works is you have your main game space, so this is the screen that you're going to see when you play the game, this white space over on the side here, the left side. And you will start the game by pushing the green flag and stop it by pushing the red stop sign. And this is what our player, quote unquote, is going to see once they play our game. Uh, they're only going to see this screen. They're not going to see this gray, or gray area to the right and to the bottom. Um, which would be our back end. This gray area is what we're going to be um, arranging and um, building in such a way that will allow us to have a maze game. Now, Scratch, like I said, it's 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 more than just a game maker. You can also make animations if you wanted to. So you basically hit the green flag and you sit back and watch the animation that you've created. That's tons of fun to do as well, but um, in this case, we're going to hit the green flag and the person's going to play the game that we have in this void screen here. So first thing we're going to want to do is create the actual maze that we want the, the cat to go through. So what I'm going to do is go to, let's see, down in the left here, the bottom left, you're going to have a, a, a little icon that's just a white square. It's kind of off to the side here, kind of hard to see, called Stage. And this is going to be our actual background. And so like I said, we're going to draw a maze. So I'm going to double click on that. And um, if you notice, this tab in the middle up here, there's three tabs, changed when I clicked on stage. So let me just go back and see what happened. Um, when we opened the project, we were on this cat sprite, sprite one, you can see it's labeled. And you have three tabs, scripts, costumes, and sounds, costumes, and sounds. And what this basically means is you got scripts, which are which is the code of our program. The scripts are the specific commands we're going to give our different characters. And the costumes are the different frames of that character, the, the, the different ways the character can appear. And sounds are, you know, uh, pretty self-explanatory. If you wanted to add sounds, this is the tab you would do it on. So, um, like I said, when you click on stage, instead of the three tabs you see under the sprite category, scripts, costumes, and sounds, you have scripts, backdrops, and sounds. And that's because this is the background of our game and our background is going to um, include a maze so this is where we where we would uh, draw that so what I'm gonna do is click on backdrops and this area on the right here this is actually where I'm gonna draw the maze so what I'm gonna do first is fill the entire space with a certain color let's go with um, let's go with purple because it's such a great color I'm gonna go ahead and click in the white here and it fills the whole background with yellow or with, <laughs> why would it do yellow? With purple. So um, once that's established and filled, I'm going to click on the paintbrush. And we will have the pathway of this cat in our maze be yellow, since I misspoke earlier and said yellow. And if you see right here, the, the icon is really small. I'd like to have a bigger 
um, width to work with for our paintbrush. And actually, I'm going to crank it up all the way. Crank it up the highest. It'll go. And I'm going to just draw a little maze that this cat can go through. And what we're going to do is give this a, um, a set of rules that will um, affect its journey along this yellow brick road. So let's see. What I'm going to do, in addition to drawing the yellow path, I'm going to change and get a third color going. In this case, we will do this pink color here. And I'm just going to put a little little circle at the end here. So, And it's important that you do this for the code that we're going to write. So basically, we're going to write code that says the cat can only walk in the yellow part of the maze. If it touches, if it touches the purple part, the game is over. And if it touches the um, the pink part, then 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 the cat wins. The character wins. So that's the idea. So we're going to set up a basic set of rules. And if you notice over here, the cat is bigger than the actual maze. So I'll show you how you can shrink the cat down right now. So you go ahead and you click on the cat, and there is a, let's see, I'm going to go back to the scripts menu here, and let's see, if you look up top, there is two little icons, it'd be tough to see them if you didn't know where they were, but right at the top in this gray bar, there's a grow button, and there's a shrink button, we're going to want to shrink it, but we're going to want to shrink the cat by pushing on that button, so go ahead and you make sure you're on the cat sprite, and I'm just going to Click shrink on this cat and make him a little bit smaller. That, that's a good size. Um, the smaller you make him, the easier the game will be. So, okay, so I can show you, just to show you, um, if I hit the green flag, nothing's going to happen. We have not given this cat or this entire game any instructions for how to react when you hit the green flag. So first things we want to do is make sure you clicked on the cat sprite. We're going to go ahead and click on events and we're going to drag over one of the blocks and just so you know these blocks you can think of as Lego pieces and each Lego piece or block represents one line of code. So um, first thing we're going to do is pull over this one green flag um, block is clicked um, we're going to add that. Um, okay, no, we're not actually. Okay, so first thing we're going to pull in is the, if you go to um, the second block here, it says one space key is pressed. And we're going to drag that over to this gray area. And this gray area is where we're going to have control. This is where we're going to give the cat instructions. So when space key is pressed, do blank. We haven't added anything yet. So um, we're going to hit when space key is pressed, change, and we're going to go to this motion category, this blue category, and we're going to pull over a blue block. And by the way, all these blue blocks will change the quote unquote motion of the character and the way it moves around its environment. And in this case, it's going to move 10 steps or pixels to the right um, in perspective of the character. So. Um, when the space key is pressed, it's going to move ten, sp 10 steps to the right. So let's go ahead and test it. Um, when the green, I'm going to hit the green flag, and when I hit the space key, yep, look at that, he moves. He moves 10 steps each time. Um, so he's going to be um, on his way through the maze. Um, except I'm going to change this to right arrow. And I'm going to actually add four more, or actually three more, um, control items. So I'm going to pull in when space key is pressed, except this time I'm going to change it to left arrow and move instead of 10 steps, negative, uh, we'll go negative 10 steps. So that if you see, when you hit the right arrow, he's going to move 10 steps or pixels to the right. And when you hit the left arrow, he's going to move negative 10 steps or pixels to the right. So in other words, it's going to move 10 pixels to the left. So let's just test that out. Go right arrow, left arrow. Look at that. So now I have some horizontal control. And if I hold the left key or the right key, he actually moves right along. So let's just do the same thing for the 
um, the top two or the, the the vertical directions so I'm gonna go up arrow and I'm gonna go down arrow and then in this case instead of moving 10 steps we're going to move um, we'll go change Y by 10 so the Y is our, our other axis um, and that's gonna be up and down so change Y by 10 and then down change y by negative 10. So let's go ahead and test this out. So left, right, up, down, look at that. So now I got complete control over this cat. So that's nice. All right, so um, we still haven't established any rules for the game. So what we want is him only to be able to go on the yellow and if he touches purple um, we want to establish a rule for that, and when, if he touches pink, we want to establish a rule for that as well. So now we're going to go to the events category. This is again where we got our, our um, when blank key pressed blocks for these um, horizontal and vertical control commands. We want to pull over the when green flag is clicked. And so when the green flag is clicked, we want to pull in a, um, well actually first thing what we want to do is establish every time the green flag is clicked we want this cat to go to a specific position so um, we want him to start at the beginning of the maze so we want him to start right here and if you notice when I drag him and drop him the numbers on these different blocks over here change and specifically on this go to x blank y blank block and that's just, it's the coordinates of wherever the cat is on the screen. So we want him to start right here. So these coordinates should be all lined up. So when the green flag is pressed, every time, he will go to this spot right here. So let's test it out. So I'm going to drag him over here just to see. When I hit the green flag, he should go back to the beginning. Look at that. And he snaps right to the beginning. So every time the game starts, he's going to go to the beginning here. And that's good. So that's going to be the first thing that happens when the green flag is clicked. After that, we want to pull in what's called a forever block. And this forever block, you can think of as a loop. It's an infinite loop of activity doing whatever's inside the block. So what we want to have, we're going to set up a, a two, two questions. And the questions we want to have forever, the computer forever asking itself, and what's going on in the screen over here is, is the cat touching left? Or <laughs> is the cat touching yellow? Or is the cat touching purple? Or is the cat touching pink? And really, we don't even have to write one for yellow because we don't want anything to happen if, there's, if he's on the yellow. That, that's fine. But if he touches purple, we want the game to end somehow. And if he's touching pink, we want the game to win somehow. So basically, purple you lose, pink you win. So let's go ahead and pull in these two blocks, um, actually two of the same block. Uh, we're going to pull in this if, and you see it's a little, little uh, hexagon shape, then block. And I'm going to pull that and I'm going to put it. You can see when you drag the, the, the blocks over, they kind of highlight where you can put them. And what's nice about Scratch is you, can, you cannot put blocks in a, another block that it doesn't fit into. It only allows you to put blocks with the with the corresponding blocks so that's why it's such a great way to learn coding because you you know with coding you can totally type something um, that wouldn't work and and this kind of you know helps you with that and, and basically allows you to not break it but it's still you know you still have a, a great deal of freedom so um, basically if hexagon then blank so we don't really have any uh, um, instructions here but we want Basically, if touching purple, then end the game. So um, what we're going to go to is the sensing category, and we want it to sense, quote unquote, the purple color. So if touching color, I'm going to bring that, and make sure it's highlighted when you drop it in. See how that hexagon is highlighted white? Drop it in. And if touching color, color looks like uh, dark yellow. No, we don't want that. I'm going to click on the color, and you should be able to touch the color that you want in the space so I'm going to click on purple so if touching purple then and we want something some way to end the game let's go let me look at the different controls here 
um, sensing operators. Uh, and this is kind of what's fun. You can see what's what different options you have. Um, I will go stop all. So it'll stop everything. And maybe we can hide the character. So I didn't talk about this, but you have the show and hide. Show will reveal your character or allow him to be seen. And hide will uh, hide your character or prevent him from being seen. So we will hide the character and stop everything. And because I put the hide here, I also want to put show somewhere in the script. And I'll put show right after when the green flag is clicked so that... Let's look at what what's happening. Um, when you click the green flag, it's going to make sure that the cat is being shown and make sure the cat is over here. And then it's going to start this rule and forever checking, infinitely checking um, if the cat is touching purple, hide and stop. And that, that's all we got going right now. And by the way, we also have the controls for how the cat should move. So let's go ahead and test it out. Hit the green flag. Um, now... I can move him. If he touches purple, he should disappear. Let's test it out. Look at that. He's gone, and the game is over. And if I hit the green flag, he should appear again in the spot. Yep, look at that. So so I got the starting of a game, and it's very hard from what I just saw. Um, I could make the maze bigger if I want, but I like a good challenge. Um, but look at that. This is the idea. So if he touches the purple, it's over. Yeah, boom. Okay. So now let's add a rule for if he touches pink, the, the game would be, you know, he'd win. So let's go ahead and same thing. Um, what we want to do is go to control and pull in the F hexagon then piece. And I'm going to put it in between at the bottom, right after the, the first if piece. I'm going to put it right under that, but still within the forever block. And we want the same idea if touching color. So if touching and we want the pink color if touching pink so then what do we want to happen if he wins if touching the end line we want him to and this you know you could do whatever you want uh, we could go we could play a sound if we wanted to um, that would be cool um, how about we have him say hello but except we'll change what he actually says uh, we'll say I win exclamation point for two seconds that's nice and 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 we'll stop the game so you'll have to restart it otherwise what happens when you win um, you would have free reign to do whatever you wanted to and it could destroy the universe so anyway let's let's see let's play the game so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the play button and I'm gonna be on my way making sure not to touch the purple because we have a rule that says if purple is touched hide the cat and it's going to be a little tricky here. But I have faith. Very good. He's making his way. When he touches pink, he should say, I win. Look at that. It says it for two seconds. And and the game looks like it. Oh, actually, it stops all the rules. So I kind of like this. Um, <laughs> so because we have this stop all rule after he touches the pink, he um, all the other rules are deactivated but we still have control over the character so um, basically you you have god mode at the end and so it's a good reward and if I hit the green flag everything will restart so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make a, um, a scratch maze game and this is just one thing you could do there's there's you know basically any any 2d game you can think of you could make with scratch so hope you enjoy and uh, good luck